one live. Like I said, welcome, brothers and sisters, to another Wednesday question and answer where we open up with the Ten Commandments that God had written for the whole world to keep. Brother Tenzel. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children, and to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take up his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. We read Exodus 21 through 17. And may the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So here on question and answer, you can ask us a question and we'll answer it according to the King James Bible. And if we cannot find the answer, we will seek further counsel to bring you an answer at a later time. Keep in mind that all vague questions will not be answered and all long scripture questions will not be answered for time's sake but we may be able to point you in the direction of a DVD or CD that you can purchase by calling the office. So for time's sake, be as direct as possible with your questions so we can be as direct as possible with our answers out of the King James Bible. No other Bibles or books will be acknowledged on this program. This is a live stream. You may begin to send in your questions now even questions that pertain to salvation. But let me introduce to you the family that will be taking part on the, this evening. We got Brother Dre. Good evening. We got Brother Jerome. Rest in peace. We got Brother Tanzel. Good evening. We got Sister Deborah. Good evening. We got Brother Sean or um, Good evening. And, and we have um, the guest caller with us, and I'm Brother Cornell. So, Sister Deborah, let us get started with the first question of the evening. Uh, yes, there are several held over questions we will answer first before we get into tonight's Q&A. And the Alaska Queen asks, when it turned dark for three hours when Jesus was on the cross, did the Father come to minister to Jesus? And the scripture given is Psalms 18 verses 7 through 10. All right. Well, let's go and read that because I don't remember saying the word minister, but I know that the father's visit to his son did provide comfort. So let's go and read it and let's see what it says. Psalms 1, Psalms 18 and Tanzel will go ask you to pick it up at verse six, because this is the son saying that he cried unto God. Go ahead, brother. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. And he heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him, even into his ears. Yeah, so for him to be crying 
and his voice came into the Father. We know that he was already on the cross at this time. Verse 7. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundation also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. And there went up a smoke out of his nostril and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. All right, so this is the, the father. He bowed the heavens also and he came down to visit his son that called upon him when he was in his distress while he was on the cross. Go ahead, 10 and 11. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yeah, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. Uh -huh. He made darkness his secret place and his pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. All right, so he made darkness a secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. That's because we have never seen the Father at any time, nor seen his shape. So when he came to visit his son, he came just as it was stated here in this verse 10 and 11. Now, it doesn't say anything about ministering there, but um, let's go into the... Um, New Testament and look at it while the sun was on the cross. And let's see how it looked from that angle. Let's go to Matthew, the 27. Matthew 27. And let's pick it up at verse 42. And let's um, just read down a little bit. Read 42 and 43, Matthew 27, 42 and 43. Go ahead. He saved others, but himself he cannot save. Hmm. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. So we see that he was on the cross at this time. Go ahead. He's tr he, tr he trusted in God, so let him deliver him now. And if he will have him, for he said, I am the son of God. Yes, and this is where he was, the son was saying, in his distress, he called upon him. Skip down to verse 45, and let's back up this darkness that was over the space of the earth. Go ahead. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. So that's from 12 noon to 3 p.m. It was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour, because this is why the father say he visited and he came down and it was darkness. Go ahead. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatana. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Skip down to read verse 50. And Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Yes, yeah, so we see that Jesus died Right after that, when he yielded up, when he cried with a loud voice and he yielded up the ghost. It doesn't say anything about ministering, doesn't say he didn't, but we know that the visit was about comfort because his son had called on him and he came and visited his son. So that's all I got on that. If anybody got something to add, go ahead. All right. We hope that that answered your question there as we move on to our next question, Sister Deb. Uh, yes. Next question. King Presence asks, in Luke 4, 3 and Luke 11, verse 11, was this is how Jesus was to get authority from the Father to perform a miracle? All right. That question, too, there. Um, Brother Jerome, would you take it and share some light on it? Let's go take a look at it. Luke 4 and 3, and then Luke 11 and 11. When you get there, go ahead and read. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Okay, now let's go look at the Luke 11 and 11. Let 
Go ahead. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serving? Okay. Uh, I think it's uh, another verse we can look at to establish um, uh, the Lord uh, getting this authority from the Father um, to perform miracles. Um, these two verses don't really make that point. So um, let's look at Acts, uh, the 10th chapter. Mm. And let's look at verse 37 through 38. Acts 10 and read verse 37 and 38. When you get there, go ahead. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism with John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Yeah, so he said uh, God the Father uh, anointed him with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and with power. So the the authority is established right there that, you know, he Jesus got the power to do the miracles that he did. Mm -hmm. And that, that's all I got on that. All right. Thank you for that answer there, brother. We hope that answered that question as we keep it moving right along. Uh, yes, keeping it moving right along. Silent I asked, what name did Israel get blessed in? Uh, number six, verses 24 through 27. Was it Jesus or Jehovah? Number six, 24 and 27. What name did Israel get blessed in, Brother Dre? Um, let's go to number six and read. Start at verse 22, Tanzel, when you get it. Let's start there. Verse 22. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to Aaron and to his son, saying, On this wise, ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, the Lord so bless notice, notice here, it says, speak on to Aaron, told Moses, the Lord says, speak on to Aaron and his sons mm -hmm. and tell the children of Israel, say on to them, go ahead. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Mm -hmm. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Right. So back in this time, let's see whose name that he came in, but they didn't know that name. Let's go to Exodus 6. Exodus, the sixth chapter and verse 3. Exodus 6. Pick it up at verse 2. Go ahead. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. So the Lord spoke on to Moses and he said, I am the Lord. I appeared unto the I Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Now let's look and see what name did Jehovah come in? Let's go to um, let's go to John the fifth chapter. John the fifth chapter. We want to see what name Jehovah came in, and I want you to read verse forty-three. Go ahead. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. So Jesus came in his father's name. Mm -hmm. This is the name that Jesus came in. Now let's go to Philippians 2. Philippians 2, and we're going to read, start at verse 5. Philippians 2, verse 5. Go ahead. 
let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought in that robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So Jesus took on the form of a servant before he was a servant. Like in, 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 uh, in John, he tells you to give me back what I had with thee before the world was. But when he was in, when, before he was in the form of a servant, he was God, very God. But go ahead, brother. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Mm -hmm. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name. So he gave him a name, which is above every name. What is that name? Go ahead. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. So I got one more place. Let's go to uh, Acts, the third chapter. Acts, the third chapter. And I want you to read verses 25 and 26. Go ahead, brother. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers. Saying unto Abraham, and into thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. In thy seed, and that seed is Christ. Go ahead. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, send him to bless you in turn in every way, every one of you from his iniquities. So sent him to bless you in turning everyone away from his iniquities. So it is the name of Jesus that we blessed in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, That's all right. I get. All right, brother. Thank you for that explanation there. We hope that answered their question as we keep on moving. Okay, next question. Helen Broswell asks, what is the significance of being circumcised on the eighth day? All right. What is the significance of being circumcised on the eighth day? Um, can you shed a little light on that guest call? Because God said do it. All right. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Jesus himself was circumcised the eighth day when he came in the flesh. And we're going to Hope that that answered your question there. And we're going to keep it moving, Sister Deb. Moving along, Elvis Santana says, can you explain why does some of the prophets refer to the book of Jasher or just explain these two scriptures, Joshua 10, verse 13, and 2 Samuel 1, verse 18? Okay. So explain why do some of the prophets refer to the book of Jasper? Well, we can go to Joshua 10 and 13 and ask the guest caller to shed some light on that question. Read. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasper? To the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Now the whole thing is, he said, is not this written? What written? What he's telling you that it happened. Go and read mm -hmm. the next one now. That'd be Samuel 1 and 18. Mm -hmm. Read it. What, what verse is that? Uh, that'd be 2 Samuel 1 and 18, bro. 2 Samuel 1 and 18. Second Samuel 1 and 18. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the King of Israel? 
the whole thing is. You read verse 18? A second. No, no second Samuel, uh, Brother Tanzer. Oh, second, second Samuel. Samuel. I'm in the wrong. Yeah, I'm the part of the body. Second Samuel 1 and 18. Second Samuel. So he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow, and behold, it is written in the book of Joshua. Now you notice both of them told you what happened. I need yep. to go to the book of Joshua to uh, 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 come confirm what they've already told you. Now, we don't have a book of Joshua in the King James Version. Then again, too, if I found some book that they call the book of Joshua, then I don't need an unauthenticated book to tell me what's already written in the King James Version of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So as far as this question is concerned, whatever's written is irrelevant. They already told us what happened there. All right. It was just like you saying, I got to go to another book to confirm the word of God that's written in the King James Version. No, we already said we deal with the King James Version. So because they refer to it, it might be authentic, but the book that somebody bring you and say, this is the book of Joshua, how can you prove that it is the one that they're talking about? You can't. So what do you do is you go with the fact that's already been stated in this book. Right. That's, that's all I have to say. If it's not inside right. the cover from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version, it is irrelevant to me. Well, that's all I have to say. All right, we hope that answered your question there. As we keep moving, Sister Deborah. Uh, yes, next question. Examining women asks, what scripture shows the wisdom of Esther? What scripture show the wisdom of Esther, Brother Jerome? It would have been wise for uh, Esther to draw from all the scriptures you know, that she had at her, at her disposal, you know. So, you know, she can apply, you know, that wisdom in whatever situation she was in in her lifetime, okay? But there's a there's one verse that I will share with you to kind of summarize to some degree. Uh, Proverbs, uh, the second chapter. Let's read a few verses in there. Uh, Pick it up at the at the one tens there and read it to the two, and then we're gonna skip. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and have my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yeah, it's, it's God's wisdom, you know, and that's why she should draw uh, from the scriptures, whatever scripture she had at uh, her disposal, just like we call to do. Okay. Um, verse two, uh, you read that, skip down to verse six and read to the seven. Well, the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. And he lay up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Yeah, so you can read some situations that uh, Esther and, uh, and, and uh, people of God went through in her time. And, and, and because they did what they were supposed to do according to the wisdom of the Lord, he was a buckler unto them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, skip, uh, read eight and read to the 12. He keepeth the path of judgment and preserves the way of his saints. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yeah, every good path. When wisdom enter into thy heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, Discretion shall preserve thee, and understanding shall keep thee. So again, she used the wisdom of the Lord, and when she stood before the king, she used discretion, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Through the wisdom of the Lord God. Go ahead. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things. And that's exactly what happened. The Lord delivered the people of God, Esther, Mordecai, all of them, okay? 
through the wisdom of God. So that's all I got on that. All right, brother Jerome, they go in and read all 10 chapters. They'll see it's a lot of wisdom in all 10 of them. Yeah. All right. Thank you, brother, for that. And we hope that that answered your question as we move on to our next question. Our next question, Deborah Davis asks, what scriptures will keep Christians strong when under Satan's attack, especially if they are elated, full of joy for hearing the true word of the Lord and sharing the true word with lost souls? All right. So what scriptures will keep Christians strong when under Satan's attack? Well, um, why don't we start off, Brother Tanzel, and then open it to the panel. Let's go into um, that Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Because this is something daily that everybody who is a Christian seeking salvation should put on. Because Satan has a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Ephesians 6, brother. And Satan may come at you with attack, but you want to make sure that you got this on. Ephesians 6 and 10, brother, when you get there. Go ahead. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yep. Put on the whole arm of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So you have to put on that whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Go ahead, brother. For be roused not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. Now, how much of the armor you got to put on, Tanzan 13? So wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, mm -hmm. that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. That's right. So stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Yes, go ahead. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh -huh. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked. So in your question, it don't mean you won't be under attack, but you should make sure you got this arm on. Go ahead, brother, read uh. 17 for me. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And did you read 16? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's what you got to, that's a great start every day, putting on that whole arm of God so you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Open to the panel. Anybody like that? Okay. Well, we hope that that answered your question there as we move on, Sister Deborah, to our next. Our next question, A People says, I meant, are there any IOG video lessons on the giant? Uh, she had asked this question last week uh, and she meant about the DVDs that we have at IOG instead of just uh, videos on the giants and uh, the angels reproducing. Okay. Uh, we're actually guest caller to share some light on that question. The answer is no. As we continue to move on, Sister Deborah, hope that answered. They question. Yes. Um, next question. Uh, Barack Israel says, uh, IOG panel, please give enlightenment as to if a righteous man is not perfect in his walk with Christ, but repents of his transgression before the Most High, should he needs be water baptized again all right um please give enlightenment as if a righteous man is not perfect 
in his walk with Christ, but repents of his transgression before the Most High, should he needs be water baptized again. Well, I would tell you this, that the protocol at the Israel of God is that when you are baptized in Jesus' name, the correct way, that there is only one per customer. So if you go out and you happen to fall off or do something that's contrary to the Lord, you can't come back and get a second baptism. You only get one. That's all Christ had when he was in the flesh. That's all we allowed it is one baptism. But let's go to Romans, the third chapter. Romans 3. And let's pick up, because when they say it in here, um, if a righteous man. Let's go and read Romans 3 and verse 10. And then we're going to skip down, Brother Tanzel. Go ahead. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So I wanted to make sure that we read that, that there is none righteous, no, not one. Skip down to 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So if you ever fall off, you know, in your works toward the Lord, hey, turn over to Proverbs 24 right quick, and then we'll open it up to the panel. Proverbs 24. Because you are responsible like everybody else to continue to run this race for eternal life. That's right. Proverbs 24. And read that verse 16 for me. One verse. Go ahead, brother. For a just man falls seven times and rises up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. So if you're trying to be a just man and you happen to fall off, then hey, you dust yourself off, get back in this race, ask the Lord to forgive you, and hey, keep on running. But as far as thinking that the water alone will clean you up after you are doing any type of willful sinning, one baptism per customer at the Israel of God. Open to the panel. And yeah, love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And lean right. on him. You know, yep. call on him. Yes, sir. Know, and uh, yep. that you may overcome. That's right. That's right. Don't, like Lord say, don't, don't faint. You know, continue to work hard and run this race. Mm -hmm. let's, go to, let's go to Ezekiel 18 right quick, if we can. Ezekiel 18? Yeah, read verses 31. And 32. Right. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies, said the Lord God. So wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. Now that whole chapter talks about oneness and sin that turns away from his sin. And none of, his, none of his sin will be mentioned. You get baptized, you are buried with him in baptism. Sure. You're supposed to raise with him and walk in the newness of life. That's right. So you, you have the opportunity to turn. We all do. From our transgressions so, to, so we won't die. That's so right. you, if you know better, do better. That's it. Yep. That's it. Thank you, brothers, for those explanations there. We hope that answered their question, and let us move on. Moving on. Sam Burns says, wasn't Jesus also a Nazarite from birth? And the scripture given is number 6, verse 18, and verse 21. Number 6. 18 and 21. Um, Brother Dre, can you share some light? Yeah, let's let's read that number six and 18 and then skip to verse 21, Tanzel. Go ahead. And the Nazarite shall shave the head of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall take the hair of his head of his separation and put it in the fire, which is under the sacrifice of the peace offering. Skip down to 21. This is the law of the Nazarite who have vowed 
and of his offering unto the Lord for his separation. Besides that, that his hand shall get according to the vow, which he vowed, so he must do after the law of his separation. So now this don't have anything to do with whether or not Jesus is a, is a Nazarite. Um, but let's skip down. Let's, let's bag up a little bit and read, pick it up at verse one. I want to show you something in here. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dry. So he shouldn't drink any strong drink, any wine, any moist grapes or dried grapes. Let's go to Luke 7, 7 chapter, and we're just going to read one verse. Luke 7, and pick it up at verse 34. Luke the Son 7. of Man. Go ahead. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bill, a friend of publicans and sinners. So Jesus wasn't a Nazarite because a Nazarite is not supposed to drink. But I show you what he was because people read this and they equate it with him being a Nazarite. Let's go to Matthew, the second chapter. Matthew 2 and, and uh, read verse 23. Go ahead, brother. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. He shall be called a, Naz a Nazarene. He was a Nazarene because he was from Nazareth, but he was not a Nazarite. It's a lot of ends there, but he was not a Nazarite. Right. That's all I got. Yep. Came from Nazarene. All right, my brother, thank you for that explanation, man. Sister Deborah, time check. Uh, the time is 8.08. All right, our next question, please. All right, uh, Sanders Herring says, at ICOJ, one of the readers had on fringes. I believe that Brother Bowie says, fringe wearing dishonors the blood of Jesus. Could some clarification for edification be established? All right. We're going to ask the guest caller to shed some light on that. Well, I'm listening to Brother Boy. You have never said that. But Brother Boy said was that because uh, 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 the trenches are no longer necessary, because under the new covenant, God put his, uh, 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 God's going to put his laws, and he did put his laws in your inward parts mm -hmm. and write them in your mind. That's what he said. But one thing is, first thing is, we need to know what law that the covenant was established on. Let's go into Exodus, the 34th chapter, and read verses 27 and 28 when you get there. In time, as soon as you get there. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the word of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now, Moses was there with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. And then God entered into a covenant with Israel, and he wrote upon the table the uh, words of the covenant, which was what? The Ten Commandments, ain't that correct? That's yes, right. Now, this is the covenant that God wanted Israel to keep. But now, let's see why the, the uh, 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 French is coming existence in the first place. Go to Numbers, the 15th chapter. Did you read both verses there? Hold on. 
Did Tanzel read both questions? What, uh, what, what was uh, was it 27 28 or 28 29? Uh, you read you read 27 and 28, right? Well, I just I read 28. Now, read 27 and 28. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the ten of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the so that's why I want you to read this. That's why I said 27, 28. He said, write down these words, because after the tenor of these words, have I made a covenant with Israel. Mm -hmm. These words. Go ahead. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So... So now we know what, what the law he's going to make the covenant on, the Ten Commandments. Ain't that correct? Yeah. Right. Now let's, right. let's go and find out why fringes came into existence in the first place. Now let's go to number the 15th chapter and start reading at verse 32. And we're going to read the 40. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Uh -huh. they, and they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. And they put him in ward because it was not declared what should be done to him. Now, and the Lord they said, him up? Oh, why did they lock him up? It's because he broke one of the commandments. Ain't that correct? Mm, that's right. Do no leave or work on the Sabbath day. So now he had broken a part of the commandments. Hmm. And the Lord said, after the tenor of these words, have I entered into a covenant with you. So now this guy done broke one. So they, hmm. they locked him up because they didn't know what to do with it. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, the man should be surely put to death. All the congregations shall stone him with stones without the camp. Uh -huh. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned them with stones. And he died as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, let's see what happened after they stoned this guy. What did the Lord do now? Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation, and that they put upon fringes of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a friend that ye may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them, and that ye seek not after your... So why did he tell them to do the fringes? That they might remember the commandments. Ain't that correct? That's yep. right. Those are the words of the covenant. Ain't that correct? Yeah. That's right. Go ahead. And that ye seek not after your own hearts and your own eyes, after which ye used them to go glory. Hmm. That ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. So now, so now why? According to what we read, the reason why he introduced fringes is to remind them to keep his commandments. Ain't that right? That's yep. right. And to do them. So that was, that was the covenant agreement, wasn't it? Yeah. Now let's go into Jeremiah 31 and 31. That's the only reason. There's no other reason. It didn't say this is our culture, did it? No. It said to remind you to keep the commandments. Ain't that correct? Yep. That's right. Now, let's go into Jeremiah 31, 31. Read from verse 31 to 33. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant mm -hmm. they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. Now, but this year, now, he made a new covenant with them, mm -hmm. and they broke it. Ain't that right? That's yeah. right. So they broke the old covenant. Did, what verse was that? That was the end of 32. Go ahead. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God, and they shall be my people. Now, and they shall finish it. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. 
for they shall all know me from the least of them until the greatest of them, saith the Lord. I will no. forgive their iniquities and I will remember their sin no more. So now what's he going to put inside? The words of the covenant, isn't that correct? That's right. Ten commandments. Now, but he said a new covenant because they broke the old. So that means the old covenant and what came and what they were reminded of it don't exist no more. It's right. done with. Mm-hmm. Now let's go and see when this covenant was in, was was uh, 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 was instituted. Go into uh, Hebrew the tenth chapter. Hebrews chapter ten. Start reading at verse ten. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Uh huh. And every priest stand of daily ministry and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Mm-hmm. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he has said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds when I write them. And their now, sins look. and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, what he said is, after Jesus was sacrificed, then he said, now, this is the covenant I was talking, that I was spoke about concerning your fathers. Then I'm going to make a new covenant. So mm-hmm. when did this new covenant start? The day that Jesus was sacrificed right. is not something that's going to come in the future. It is something that has started right now. But go ahead and read. Now we're we missing. Start? We got eighteen. We at eighteen. Well, I tell you what. Uh, 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 and see, skip down to verse twenty-six now. For if we sin, we'll. Real- For if we stand willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. So now, once he put these laws in your heart, and he's done it. But you get people try to use, you know, and everybody going to know me. Everybody is not going to accept the law. That's why Jesus is going to uh, uh, kill people in, in, uh, 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 at the end of the thousand-year millennium period. Mm-hmm. So now, the covenant started when Jesus died. That's why it says right here, this is what uh, uh, Jeremiah was talking about. When Jesus died on the cross, the covenant is in force. So now, anybody that break this covenant right now, they're going to the lake of fire. Right. You put it in your mind. And the people that, that read these uh, commandments got to understand that. The new covenant started when Jesus died on the cross. Therefore, if we break this covenant right now, we're going to get cut off. The only thing we have left for the lake of fire. Mm-hmm. And now, one of these gentlemen had on fringes when he was reading at this other, other congregation. That's because he don't have no understanding. It is not our culture. Never have been our culture. It was added because of sin. But right. if it was our culture, every Hebrew would be wearing them. Is that correct? Yeah. Let's go into Acts and, see, and pick up a famous Hebrew. Let's go into Acts, the uh, uh, 21st chapter, and read verse 37 and 38. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canest thou speak Greek? Uh-huh. Are, not thou, are not thou that Egyptian which before these days making an uproar and led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderers? Wait a minute. This guy thought Paul was an Egyptian, didn't he? Yep. So, if if fringes was our uh, culture, 
wouldn't Paul and all the Hebrews would have had fringes on them? Yeah. Okay. Then that Greek captain wouldn't have mistaken him for an Egyptian. He would have known that he was a Hebrew because he would have saw his fringes. Mm -hmm. Why was not Paul wearing fringes? It's because Paul come along under the new covenant. And the law is to go in your mind and not on your body so you can look down and be reminded to keep the commandment. Right. So the reason this guy had fringes on because he's ignorant about the word of God. And I'm not bashful to say that. That's all mm -hmm. I have to say about it. All right. Thank you for that explanation. We hope that answered their question as we move on, Sister Deborah. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, Darren Stewart has two questions. One, is there such a thing as the Israel of the flesh and the Israel of the spirit? And what's the difference between the two? And number two question, will there be white slaves in the earth made new. So again, number one, I will read that one first uh, to be answered. Is there such a thing as the Israel of the flesh and the Israel of the spirit? And what's the difference between the two? All right, well, open to the panel. Yes, call. Ephesians, the second chapter. Start reading at verse 11. 11 through 14. Then we're going to skip down uh, from 20 to 21. Go ahead. So wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Mm -hmm. That at that time ye were without Christ being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Mm -hmm. But now in, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Having a... Now, Jesus, you put yourself under the blood of Jesus, then you become spiritual Israel, whether you're a Gentile, and actually, even the physical Israel be becomes spiritual Israel. What verse was that? That was the end of 14. At the end of 14? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to skip down to, uh, uh, skip down to, uh, uh, 18. Hmm. Uh, skip down to verse 20. Go ahead. And I built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ, him being the chief cornerstone. So now you are, you say you're a fellow citizen. Did you read that? Uh, you'll be starting at 18. Well, start there. Go ahead. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens uh -huh. with the saints and of the household of God. And I built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now, a spiritual Israelite is the one that believe in Jesus and walk in the law. But then, but you could also become spiritual no matter who you are. And let's go into uh, Isaiah 56 chapter and look at it. Isaiah 56 and start at verse 1. From 1 to 3, and then we're going to skip down to 6 and 8. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness is to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that lay up hold on it that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that is joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. 
For thus saith the Lord unto the unit that keep my Sabbaths and choose the thing that pleases me and take hold of my covenant. Uh -huh. Even unto them would I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than a son and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the, the name of the Lord and to be his servant. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and take a hold of my covenant. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt oh, yeah. offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house uh -huh. shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Okay, the Lord, now, now, now uh, read, read the next verse. Go ahead. The Lord God, which gathered the outcasts of Israel, said, Yet will I gather others to him besides those that I gather unto him. Okay. Now, so letting you know, once you start keeping his laws or uh, either, get uh, 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 baptized into Jesus. You are a spiritual Israelite. Now, let's go one last place uh, uh, on this. Let's go into Galatians, the third chapter, and read from 26 to 29. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, and there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So now, God made a promise to Abraham, and his seed, and his seed only. So in order for you to be his seed, then you've got to be uh, baptized in the Jesus. That covers all people. No matter what son of Noah you came out of. So how do you become, what's the difference in a spiritual Israelite and a physical? Well, one that's born, he's physical, but even he's not spiritual. The only spiritual Israelite is the one that's baptized into Christ and going to walk in his laws once you have joined on to Jesus. Just like it says in Galatians, then he is heirs according to the promise. So if you don't believe in Jesus, you're a physical Israelite. Just right. like the Gentiles don't believe in Jesus, he is a physical Gentile. But to get spiritual, both of you have to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you be Christ, then the Abraham seed and heirs according to the promise. That's all I have for that one. Let's go to the second one. The second one was, will there be white slaves in the earth made new? Why don't we go to the book and see what it says? Okay. Let's go into uh, uh, Isaiah, 61st chapter. Isaiah 61st chapter. Read verses 4 and 6 when you get there. And they shall build the old wastes. They shall rise now up the former. This is when Israel go back now. And they're going to build the old waste. Go ahead. And they shall raise up the... Former desolation, they shall repair the waste cities and the desolations mm -hmm. of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your wine dressers, your vine dressers. And white folks, and white folks gonna stand and feed, feed your flock. The sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. They're strangers and aliens, didn't they? Did it say white folks? No. Okay, then. So the whole thing is, it's a stranger. That's a non-Israelite. But then it's not going to be slavery. It might be a job or indigent servants. Because one thing it was with indigent servants, once they served so long, no longer than seven years, then you had to give them an inheritance. Let me show you what I'm talking about now. Let's go into Ezekiel chapter 47. We're going to read th verses 13, 14, and verse 21 and 23. Read it when you get there. 
Thus saith the Lord God, this shall be the border whereby ye shall inherit the land according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And Joseph shall have two portions. And ye shall inherit it, one as well as another, concerning the which I lifted up my hand to give it unto your fathers. And this land shall fall to you for an inheritance. Okay. Now, skip now. The verse 21. Huh? Now go ahead. Did you read 314? Yeah. So this is when the Lord is dividing the land, right? And everybody getting inheritance according to their tribe. Ain't that correct? Mm hmm. Skip down to verse 21 and go ahead. So shall ye divide this land unto you according to the tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. and, it shall, and it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you and to the stranger that sojourn among you, which shall be got children among you, and they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. And they shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that in what tribe the stranger sojourner, they shall ye give him his inheritance, said the Lord God. So now, you're talking about uh, 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 enslaving the strangers. No, look, God ain't gonna let us let them us do to them what they did to us. Did the Lord say even if He started to punish your enemy and you started to rejoice, then He would stop punishing them? Didn't He say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same here. We might have some indigenous service, but we gonna have to pay them. But the time gonna come, we will have to give them an inheritance, just like one that's born in the land. So the brothers that are always talk about enslaving, how are you going to feel when you're going to have a stranger that have an inheritance of the party and that we're going to have? You're going to get mad and tell God this ain't supposed to be? Right. Now, we'll have servants. God said we're going to have servants. To call them slaves? I don't think so. But the whole thing is, there's going to come a time when you have strangers that's going to get an inheritance among Israel. God said that too, but Hebrews don't read that. That's all I have to say. All right. We're going to move on to our next question. Next question. Mouse Man asks, does daytime end at evening, otherwise known as pitch black, or as sundown exactly? No, the day don't end once the sun go down. Sun rises in the east and sets in the west. As soon as it sets in the west, you still got a whole lot of daylight out there. So it's not in the end, open to the panel. We're going to Proverbs the seventh chapter and read verse nine. Yep, Proverbs seven and nine. Read it. You get that. In the twilight, in the evening in the black and dark night. That's what it is when it's twilight. There's some people think twilight has something to do with light. It, it, it look, when the light is gone in the evening, in the dark night. Now go into Joshua 8 and 29. I'm sure you like Joshua had a king. Uh, he hung. Let's see when he took him off the cross. 8 and 29. And the king of Ai, and he hanged him on a tree until evening time. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded, commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it out the entering of the gate of the city and raise there on a great heap of stones that remain of until this day. So now he had him on, he had hung him until the even time. Then he said that was when the sun went down, didn't it? Right, and, and as soon as the sun was down. There you go. So we're talking dark here. One other place, and that's all I have to add to it. Go to Zechariah, the 14th chapter, and read verse 6 and 7. This is when the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time, it shall be light. Oh, 
So if the evening time shall be light, then what's the opposite of that? Right. Evening time is dark. But at that time, the Lord said, it ain't gonna be new, it's going to be neither day nor night. At the evening time, there shall be light. Because the evening and the morning is the first day. The evening time is pitch black, and the morning is the daytime. But when Jesus comes, he said, it ain't going to be day nor night, but in the evening time, it's going to be light. In other words, we ain't going to have no more darkness after that. That's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. All right. Hope that answered your question as we give a time check, Sister Deborah. Uh, the time is 836. Israel Johnson says, is not the secret place referring to the wilderness? Is not the secret place referring to the wilderness open to the panel? Yes, yes it, it is. is. <laughs> Go to Psalm 91, not at verse 1. We say, we say, Psalm, did you say Psalm 91? Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord. That secret place, didn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowl and from the nausea and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wing shall thou trust. And his truth shall be thy shield and buckle. Yeah. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at that side and 10,000 at that right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Uh huh. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. So there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. He uh -huh. shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Okay. So now that is now that is the Lord's secret place, and that is the uh, uh, wilderness, because he's going to give his angels charge over you. Now let's go to Revelation 12, chapter. Revelation 12, chapter 1. And we're going to talk about this woman here. After she had brought forth a man child, let's see what she fled to. Read verse 6. Just read it. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she have a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now skip down to verse 13 when the dragon tried to catch this woman. Go ahead. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out his mouth, water as a flood, after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the now dragon. That's, was, that's enough. The woman was in the wilderness. She was in the Lord's secret place. And his angels had charge over it. He mm -hmm. couldn't lay a finger on her. All, all the thing they could, we could see the people that's dying and, and on the right hand and on the left. But none is going to come near her. So sure, God's secret place is the wilderness. That's mm -hmm. all I have to say about it. Yes, sir. Good. Good answer there. We hope that answered your question as we continue to move on, Sister Deborah. Yes. Uh, moving on. Razor sight, razor sickle asks in Isaiah 41, verse 14, why is Jacob being called a worm by God? What's the understanding? And the scriptures given are 
Ecclesiastes 3, verse 19, Genesis 1, verse 25, and Genesis 2, verse 7. So why is Jacob being called a worm by God? And that's Isaiah 41, verse 14. Right, well, we're going to read that and then open it up to the panel that Isaiah 41 and 14, Tanzel. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Well, a person don't know why he called him a worm. He don't have no scripture said why he called him a worm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's all I have to say about that. Anybody else got anything to say about it? Mm. So let's no. go with Cleese. Hmm? I say no. He gave call us many names. Grasshoppers and dirt and vapor, a right. lot of names. So that's just one mm -hmm. of the other names. <laughs> that's one of the things you should write, make a note and keep it in your pocket. So when you see God, ask him. <laughs> Let's go in Ecclesiastes 3 and 19. Ecclesiastes 3 and 19. Mm -hmm. For that which befalleth the Son of Man befalleth beasts, even one that befalleth them, as the one dieth, so dies the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man have no preeminence, preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. Mm. Keep reading the tale. All go into one place, all out of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Mm -hmm. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? So, so the thing is, why he said that we don't have no preeminence on the beast, he's talking physical. We breathe air, breathe, beast breathe air. We have to eat. Beasts have to eat. So now let's go into Genesis. First chapter and read verse 25. Mm -hmm. Read it. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now, have you ever seen a horse have a cow? Never. Have you ever seen a monkey have a man? No. <laughs> so just like the beast, men have men, monkeys have monkeys, cows have cows, and horses have horses, because every seed after its own kind. So still, whatever happened to the beast, same happened to the man. They are born. They eat and they die. We are born, we eat and we die, and we all have to breathe. Now let's go into Genesis, the second chapter, and read verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became uh -huh. a living soul. So now where did the beast come from? Out of the ground also, ain't that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Lord had to breathe in his nostril, and he became a living soul, because that is a body. That's because that's the sum total of you. So now, breathe, 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 eat, breathe, die, and he go back to the ground. So where does what does man do different? Nothing. Nothing. That's all I have to say. All right. Uh, can we? Can we add Job 25 to that? Job, Job 25, pick it up at four, read from four to six. Job 25. Go ahead, Tony. How, yeah. how then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Behold, even to the moon and it shineth not. Yeah, the stars are not pure in his sight, how much less man that is a worm, and the son of man, which is a worm. Who 
food for thought. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to keep it moving, Sister Deborah. I believe we are getting ready to step off into some new territory. Uh, yes, the time is 8.46, and we are now into tonight's Q&A for June the 29th, 2022. Sun and Prince says, is Numbers 5 verses 12 through 29 talking about abortion? Was it okay for abortion when the women were defiled? I saw someone online saying this. I need some more understanding on what these ver- what understanding on these verses. So it is numbers 5 12 through 29. Are these verses talking about abortion? All right, we'll go to numbers 5 and pick it up at that verse 12 and um we like to also say, be careful of what you see online. Don't have to have no truth in it sometimes. But let's just read this Numbers 5. And, and um, what verses did they want to read, Sister Devil? 12 through 29. It's quite a bit of reading there, but uh, we're going to invite the panel in to interject as our brother Tenzel begins reading at verse 12. Go ahead, my brother. Speak it to the children of Israel and say unto them, if any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him, and a man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept closed, and she be defiled, and there be no witness against her, neither she be taken with the matter. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled. Then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offerings for her, the tenth part of an ephod of body meal. He shall pour it, no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon. Let me cut in on this. This has nothing to do with defile or with the abortion. Nothing whatsoever. What's this got something to do with if a man committed adultery in the days of Israel? Uh, if a woman committed adultery in the days of Israel and the man didn't have no proof, he would take him to the priest. The priest would have a mixture, get some dirt off the ground, and would make a mixture with water. If she drank the water, if nothing happened to her, she was innocent. But if she was uh, 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 guilty, her thigh would rot. And her bowels would fall out. That would happen to her. It's got nothing to do with abortion. We shouldn't waste no more time on this foolish question. All right. And we're going to keep it moving on that note, Sister Deborah. Yes, keeping it moving. Uh, Phyllis Campbell asks, in Numbers 5, verse 14, is the spirit of jealousy an evil spirit in marriage and outside of marriage? Numbers 5, verse 14. God said he's a jealous. That he's jealous. Didn't he say that? Yeah. Can an evil spirit take over God? It got nothing to do with evil spirit. That's his emotion that somebody's have. Okay. And we're going to move on, Sister Deborah, as time is ticking. Yes. Uh, Just No Chill says, can you explain Judges 1 verse 19. Was this the same event from Judah taking possession of the hill country to not being able to drive out the inhabitants with the iron chariots? And the scripture given is Joshua 17 verse 18. And what's the first scripture we going to? Um, judges, not, uh, judges 1 verse 19. All right. Tenzel, why don't you go read that and then let's open it up to the panel. And the Lord was with Judah and he drave out the inhabitants of the mountains, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots mm-hmm. of iron. Open to the panel. 
But if you keep reading, you find out they finally drove him out. Keep reading. And they gave Hebron unto Caleb, Moses said. And he expelled thence the three sons of Anak. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited and had inhabited Jerusalem, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem unto this day. And the house of Joseph, they also went up against Bethel, and the Lord was with them. And the house of Joseph sent to describe Bethel, now the name of the city before was loved. And the spies saw a man come forth out of the city, and they said unto him, Show us, and we pray thee, the entrance into the city, and we will show thee mercy. And when he showed them the entrance into the city, they smote the city with the edge of the sword. But they let not the man, but they let go the man and all his family. And the man went. We can't read all that. It can take up all the time. But it is, Judah did drive him out eventually. It's all that simple. Okay? Chariot, mm -hmm. Iron Chariot. There's another place that tell you that. Anybody know where it is right quick? We don't want to do all this reading. Mm. So you scroll, anybody on the panel coming across that? Well, it's, it's in there. It's been read. But they were driven out. Because eventually, Israel had no strangers among them. And the ones that did, that's because they uh, uh, ended up charging tribute. Not that they couldn't drive them out. They wanted to collect money off of them. <laughs> but when David was king, everybody was gone. Mm -hmm. What was the other part of this? Uh, the other question, uh, the other scripture is Joshua 17, verse 18. Uh, they they said they would. So it's still asking the question about driving them out, the inhabitants with the iron chariots. Joshua 17, verse 18. You want to read that, Tanzel, when you get there? Joshua 17, verse 18. Yes, sir. Yeah. For the mountains shall be thine, for it is a wood, and thou shalt cut it down, and the outgoing of it shall be thine, but thou shalt drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots, and though they be strong. And they did drove them out, even though they had iron chariots. They drove them out. Okay. That's what it says. Mountain shall be thine, for it is wood. This is when Caleb, uh, I think Joshua gave this to Caleb, I believe, or either his son in law. Go up a little higher and read it. Let's see. Joshua 17, verse 14. And go ahead. And the children of Joseph spake unto Joshua, saying, Why hast thou given me but one lot and one portion to inherit, seeing I am a great people, for as much as the Lord hath blessed me hitherto? And Joshua answered them, If thou be a great people, then get thee up to the wood's countries, and cut down for thyself there in the land of the Perizzites, and of the giants in Mount Ephraim. Be too narrow for thee? And the children of Joseph said, The hills is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites that dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron, both they who are Beth Sheen and her towns, and they who are of the valley of Jezreel. And Joshua spake unto the house of Joseph, even to Ephraim and to Manasseh, saying, Thou art a great people and hast great power. Thou shalt not have only, lot, only one lot only. Of the mountain shall be thine, for it is of wood, and thou shalt cut it down, and the outgoing of it shall be thine, for thou shalt drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots, and though they be strong. 
And that's exactly what they did. They drove them out. Iron chairs held them up for a minute, but they drove them out. That's all I got to say. All right, Sister Deborah, time check. Uh, the time is 8.55. I believe this will be the last question here. Uh, Victoria Smith asks, can you explain St. Matthew 12, verse 31? Does this mean that all, capital A-L-L, -L, sins will be forgiven? Matthew 12? Yes, in verse 31. Matthew 12 and verse 31. All right. Why don't you um why don't you pick it up at that verse 30 and kind of get a feel for what the Lord is saying here? But uh go tell us a little further down that all sins A L L would not be forgiven. But let's read. Verse 30. Yes. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gather not with me scattered abroad. Yes. So wherefore I say unto you, all men of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Oh, so it say the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Know what the truth is, but you telling a lie. It's not going to be forgiven unto men. Read the next verse. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. All right. So if you um, speak of against the Holy Ghost, speak of against the truth and telling a lie, and you know what the truth is, it shall not be forgiven in this world, neither in the world to come. Open to the panel. So what was the question? Uh, the question was, does this mean that all sin will be forgiven? According to what we just read, the answer is no. Okay. That should be the end of it. Yeah. So avoid it's that cool. blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. Guess call That's it? right. I said, it speaks for itself. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. All right, Sister Deborah, time check. Uh, the time is 8.58. 8.58. All right, well, we have run out of time. And we took joy in partaking with you all this evening with your questions that you sent in. And if you have submitted a question, we didn't have time to get to it. No need to resubmit it because Sister Deborah would take that question that you submitted and she will put it in the rotation and we will answer it next Wednesday at 730 within our time slot of our program. So thank you all for tuning in with us this evening. And until we all come together again, let us all be safe out there and be blessed. And may the Lord have mercy on us all. Brother Tanzel, close us out, please. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.